Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode, and I'm really happy to welcome Naomi Hall. She is founder and CEO of The Recovering Educator, and what's really interesting is she's got a really uh, interesting personal journey, and she's going she's to share about, she's going to talk about stress management and uh, the extreme need for uh, supporting education. You know, education is one of those industries that is in need of massive overhaul and upgrade. And then um, it's going to be a great fireside chat. So Naomi, welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we'll dive right into it. You know, your personal journey, your motivation, uh, you know, what challenges uh, made you go out on your own and start the recovering educator? Sure. Uh, so I am an educator. That's my background, my training. I have three degrees in it. So <laughs> <laughs> that is my calling. Um, and I spent 18 years directly in education as a science teacher, department head, assistant principal, curriculum coordinator, and too many interim positions to list. Uh, so in that, um, I experienced all of the stress that comes in the many different forms of education, because I've worked in so many different pieces of it, and I worked in public and private. And I burned out a couple of times. And I had to figure out how to make the comeback on my own. I had to figure out what works, what doesn't, who can help me, what techniques work. Like, I had to figure it all out. There wasn't any support within the system for me. But I had to figure out how to come back so that I could do the job I loved but was sucking the life out of me, literally. And um, I lost my job twice in a career that you think you have, you, sh you should have some job security, right? You don't. And so the first time I lost it, um, I probably wouldn't have termed it burnout at that point, but it definitely was. And I also had so tied my identity to my career that without it, I was kind of lost. So that was my first go round. And then I also dealt with chronic illness through the entire, almost all of my career. Um, and then I also, earning my doctorate while working full time and being sick was such a challenge with, with the balance there. So when I lost my job the second time, when I was told we're not renewing you, which was again, out of the blue, like, oh my goodness. A friend called me while I was in the midst of trying to figure out what's next, trying to apply to jobs and said, hey, if you start your business, we'll support you. And I had been thinking about it for a couple of years because I'd earned my doctorate. I was wanting to move up in education and it just wasn't going the way I wanted it to. And so I was like, oh, I guess I have to take this seriously. Like, what, what am I going to do for a business? And... It just, while I was sitting there thinking about it, recovering educator came to me because that's who I am. I am a recovering educator. So my goal was not to leave education, but it was to provide the support that I didn't have when I was dealing with stress and how I came back from it. So I wanted to bring that into education. And now I've expanded farther because it's not the only stressful career there is. Like we can look at the metal, medical excuse me, medical professions, we can look at first responders, we can look at law, you name it, their stress. So it's really what I focus on is the high achievers and those that are driven to succeed in their career, because those are the ones of us who tend to burn out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's very, it's very similar to healthcare as well, especially a lot of these industries. Um, you know, we talk about these legacy industries um, is in education and we, we really need um uh, we need um, to take care of our teachers because they're teaching our kids. And what, you know, uh, I hate to say it, but I one uh, one podcast guest I was talking about, we we're talking about financial freedom, and I was asking like, why are why are people struggling financially? He's like, well, because our education system is teaching us to be poor, and mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's like you know we have to go to mentors and pay then thousands of dollars, and you know, college and. Is supposed to like prepare us and but it doesn't and it's getting very expensive so um which brings me to my uh, next question is let's um kind of um talk about the supporting educators and um do you see um you know for example um in supporting education obviously the resources to in, in the from the 
districts are lacking. So do you, do you see a situation where supporting educator comes from outside like private or philanthropic organizations, entrepreneurs, um, you know, what changes would you recommend? Yeah, that's a tough question of where it needs to come from. Yeah. Um, because it almost has to be internal grassroots um, because what the districts are providing, like you mentioned, it's not, it's not addressing the whole educator. It's addressing test scores. It's uh -huh. addressing achievement. It's, it, what what educators get for professional development tends to be curriculum and behavior management. And these are the people who are most highly educated in those things, but they're not getting the personal development. And I have to say for myself, 18 years in education, I had professional development the entire way through. It wasn't until I actually went into network marketing with Body, the fitness and, and nutrition company, where wow. I was told, you need to be doing personal development daily. I was like, wait, what? Hold up. Why is it that network marketing companies get this uh -huh. and education doesn't? And so it's really changing PD in the educational setting from professional development to personal development. And so that's really what I try to bring in is that personal development piece, because this is my philosophy. If we take care of the teachers and the administrators, they will take care of the kids in the test scores, piling things on top of them and not helping them and not supporting them. So some of it does have to have to come from outside. Some of it has to be a cry from the inside of we need help and this is what we need. And there was some help with like COVID and all of that, but that money's dried up. Uh -huh. And so the money goes to test scores. Yeah. You know, so it's really a change that has to reach up to the upper levels because they don't get, they're not getting it at the upper levels mm -hmm. and understanding there's a heart to help, but then there's also this pressure of we have to get scores up. Yeah. The other, you know, like I said, um, you know, education is a big problem to solve and, you know, things such as, you know, YouTube and Khan Academy, these are really um, changing how we can, how kids are learning. And um, so there is, I mean, there is hope. It's, um, it's not a lost cause, but um, the, you know, the next question is, um, you know, when you, when you say the, you know, reform, the recovering educator, what sort of things um, are, are you doing to help solve this problem? You know, for example, like, you know, I'm from healthcare, and I experienced the same issues as you. And I'm like, I can't fix this problem. It's too big of a problem. So I'm going to go, you know, uh, speak about it. I'm going to write about it. You know, I'm going to have a podcast. What, what sort of things are you doing to kind of um, improve the situation? Uh there of um, my favorite, my absolute favorite that I get to do is spending a full day in a district or in a school coaching. And when they line me up back to back with, with appointments, I love it because I know I'm making a difference in that building. And I know that I'm helping. When they walk out, they're like, oh my goodness, like that was amazing. So that's one of the things that I do that I just have found very, very effective. I speak, I do workshops. My colleague and I, trying to change this conversation, she and I actually are running a virtual conference every eight weeks for educators. And we've called it Thrive Conference, providing joyful growth opportunities for educators. And so we're really trying to change that conversation and find those speakers and find those experts and get that to educators so that they're getting that support that they need, looking at the whole person. And we've had a variety, a variety of experts on that some are experts in the classroom, some have been in the classroom and now run their own businesses, but talking about all kinds of different things about like mindfulness, um, laughter yoga, this is a fantastic one. Um, we have some that are in network marketing talking about how that can be help you financially and help you support your financial goals while working full time and how you can do that without losing your mind and without working 24 hours a day. Uh, so we really find various different experts to come in and speak to educators and provide that support that they're not getting. It's a free conference that we're putting on every eight weeks for them. So that's one of the big things that we're doing for them. Yeah. The other uh, thing I was talking to another podcast guest who's also from the education space, and she actually um, started um, an education company and she's actually um, is a, and it's almost like a platform where people can actually it's almost like a Khan Academy and she actually uh, you know matches um, you know she's having these 
different modules that people can come in and listen to and improve. Um, so it's really interesting. What sort of, uh, so it sounds like you're in the events, uh, what sort of, um, you know, technologies are you kind of using to, to scale and, uh, you know, grow your reach? Mm -hmm. uh, right now with um, doing these conferences is it's really a joint venture with the people that we bring in. And so we're keeping it simple and just growing it through that, where each speaker who comes in is also sharing with their audience. So that's like they come in, they speak, they offer a free gift to our audience, which is their lead gen. So it's a collaboration between us where we're helping them grow their business. They're helping us grow as well. And so that's how we've kind of kept it low budget, but still are able to provide such quality content through joint partnering with our speakers and so we're, yeah. we're keeping it pretty pretty simple yeah i love that um next thing is um you know talk about um this uh you know because you you know everybody's suffering from burnout and looking for ways of recovery and so discuss some key strategies for educators specifically and others who are experiencing that and uh, you know preventive measures that educators can take to manage uh, proactively um, and uh, avoid reaching a breaking point. Absolutely. And it, it is that identifying that you have to do something before it's too late. Yeah. And you can come back. I mean, I've been there. I've burnt out. You can come back, but it takes time. You've got to heal. And so I really focus on simple foundations and simple habits. So for me, what I work with my clients, work on with my clients is you have to move your body. You have to fuel your body. You have to drink water. You have to sleep and you've got to work on mindset. So it's my five foundations. And so four of them are pretty physical. One of them is mental, but you've got to have the body and the mind because they work together. And you really, in order for those to work, you have to step out of that. I'll take care of myself later mentality. Because if you're not taking care of yourself, you're not going to be able to take care of other people. You're not going to be able to serve them and do this job that you're called to. So kind of the I'll sleep later mm -hmm. mindset is just setting you up for failure, for illness, for, for burnout. And so it's changing that mindset of we, we've heard the analogy, putting your oxygen mask on first. You have to take care of yourself. And it's not selfish. It's I need to be the healthiest, best version of me so that I can serve you the best that I can. Because a sick me, a burnt out me doesn't do much good. Yeah. That, that's really what I focus on. And I, so the other common um, criticism I get when uh, people say put on your oxygen mask first, they're like, well, you don't understand my boss is down my throat. Um, you know, they're, yeah, you know, this, they just, they give me, you know, they're uh, all these platitudes. They say one thing and do another. They just give, you know, still say the party line, just talking. Um, so, you know, what if you cannot uh, get enough sleep? But, you know, of course, education or sorry, uh, you know, ad adequate sleep and nutrition, hydration, movement, you know, those things. But, you know, what if these uh, what if the um, the environment is not supportive of these types of techniques? You really just look at your environment and I've been in those, I've been in extremely toxic environments mm. and you need to consider, do you need to leave your environment? Is it time to go to a different school, district, career, but my caution in leaving. And I actually had a, had a conversation with someone this week. I was like, do you see the pattern? And he's like, yeah, I see it. Because if you leave the toxic environment and you don't do the healing and the personal work, you're going to end up in the exact same place again. So I was talking to someone who this was his second round and yeah. think he saw the pattern. But if you don't do the personal work, leaving the toxic environment is only a temporary solution. It's a Band-Aid. It's not taking care of the root issue. So I do encourage if you're in a talk and I have a client that I have helped get out of a toxic environment and helped her see that it was toxic. I was like, you, I'm like, this seems normal because you've been in it. And like someone described it as like cooking the frog or the lobster, you gradually turn the heat up and they don't realize it. And so helping her see like, 
this isn't how it's supposed to work. This isn't healthy and helping her get out of that. So that's also something I do is I'll help you get out of it, but I'm also going to help you do the hard personal work to heal so you don't end up there again because of bad habits. Yeah, it, and it's very similar, um, you know, these toxic uh, careers. And I talked to a lot of doctors, they're like, um, you know, they they don't realize um, the pattern that you were describing. And so basically they leave um, and then uh, they're so desperate because of that paycheck. Mm-hmm. They'll they'll go for anything and they land in even a the same or worse situation and it gets in and just spirals onward versus just like taking, you know, kind of leaving that and then, you know, de- doing that deep inner work, you know, um, you know, clarifying your goals, your values, beliefs, you know, creating boundaries. And then when you're ready for the, you know, but people are so desperate, they're like, oh, I can't be without a job or mm-hmm. you know, these things. Um, uh, really interesting. The next, so the, how do people continue education, lifelong learning? How can they, um, you know, reach out to you, work with you, check out your events, et cetera? Absolutely. So, um, I'll give you a couple links to share in the show notes. Yeah. Um, but I mean, direct the, the recovering educator at gmail.com is the easiest way to get a hold of me. Um, I'm very responsive to my email. Um, I have a free gift for your audience as well. I have a, a PDF of um, my five foundations of stress management. So kind of taking you from frenzies to free. This is your first step. And uh, it gives you some tips in each of those areas that I mentioned. So you can start small because that's the key is that we start small and work with our brain rather than against it. And we let our brain see success rather than the January do everything all at once and and crash by week one or two. Uh, So I have that for your audience as well. And then um, my conferences, I can give you a link for that as well. Um, I would love to have people join that. And even if you're not an educator, the variety of people that we have, I think you'll still find benefit and joy in it because it's about bringing joy back to your career. So we have people in all different fields talking about this um, and providing just ways to grow joyfully, way to bring ways to bring joy back into your career and your life. So those are some great options and ways that will get you directly connected with me. And for all the audience out there listening, now me for coming on and be sure to give her socials, a like and follow, check out her resources. And thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. This was fantastic. I'm always glad to 